All right. So, what this video, we played this at Waste Expo, and it's a really good video for demonstrating what the baler. Okay, so here we are. This is a conventional uh, baler. What we call conventional doesn't have the compression doors like the Rev 4. Now, this is a Rev 2, so the dimensions are 96 inches long, 60 inches wide, 28 inches from the floor to the knife. Okay? So, what's being loaded, now see it gets loaded. Now, when that ring ram comes forward, this is what we call rollback. The material, even though it was in the hopper, when that main ram comes forward, it rolls back. And we'll see later in this video, other products have tremendous rollback. Plastics and UBC. Uh, basically aluminum cams or tin cams. You have a big percentage rollback. It could be 20 to 40 percent. Would you look at that? Some people who did a test who bought the Rev4 told us prior that it was 40 percent. So that's their numbers. That's not ours. Here in this video, this is a Rev2 being loaded by our battery operated material handler and, and they're doing nothing but uh, old corrugated containers. And you gotta be careful. These things can attack the environment at any point. Okay, so as you see here, this is a Rev 2. Again, 90, 96 inches long. It's 60 inches wide, 28 inches from the floor to the knife. But you're gonna see when this main round comes forward, you're gonna see the vibration of the shear at the shear knife. When we later see the cardboard in a Rev4, you're not going to see that kaboom, that, that vibration that happens when you shear like in a conventional baler. And that shock, we call it shear shock, and that's normal in any two ram baler that doesn't have the compression doors. That puts wear and tear on your machine. So watch this. See it comes better and boom. You saw it vibrate and that's that shearing of that cardboard. Nice bells, 1,600 pound bells. Now here is a Rev4 video. And what I like about showing the Rev4 here is this conveyor is with mixed paper and that's a huge clump. Clumps like this can be problematic in a conventional two ram because when it main ram comes forward, that material can ball up and when that main ram goes to shear, that can create a jam just because it, or a bigger kaboom, and it, it's, it's more of a struggle. But you'll see with the Rev4, it's, there's no struggle at all. Okay, so here it is. You can't even see the compression doors. That material is above the knife, above the compression doors, which is 26 inches from the knife to the top of the compression doors. Boom, now it falls in. Just drop in, pull back. So 26 inches, if this is the knife to the top of the door, is being compressed into the bell chamber. Well, when you do the math of 26 inches high, 60 inches wide, 90 inches long, because the Rev 4 has a little shorter box versus what's inside the box, you're actually getting 92% of that material above the knife that gets into the hopper. So you're getting nine, you can get up to 92% more material inside each charge. So here we go. So those door compression doors came down. Now watch this. Ram ram goes for it. Look, no vibration at the shear. Where's the kaboom? And it got it in there. Now milk jugs. This is this is really where there's a lot of rollback, and you eliminate rollback with the compression doors. And so that means every charge you're going to get maximum charge. Okay, here we go. So I'll, I'll go slowly here. It's falling. Now. Nope. You can see it's a little bit below the door, so maybe this is 24 inches above the knife. So you, you may not be 92%, so maybe call it 88%. So now the doors close. So we didn't capture everything. Well, you can't win them all. Very little percentage of material. But watch when the main ram goes forward. There's no rollback. No, nothing's escaping the chamber. So as you would get in a normal conventional two ram without the compression doors, you're gonna lose anywhere between 25, 40% of material. Uh, for So each stroke, that material rolls back out. You don't get that with the Rev4. Hence, the increase in productivity because each stroke has material. So you're gonna make a bale of plastic and milk jugs like this, five to seven strokes instead of 13 to 17 strokes, almost doubling your production. 
this is our facility in Bakersfield. Uh, we are a recycler too. We handle a lot of cardboard. OCC, and this is the Rev2, conventional Rev2 here. Now here is a great video. This to me is, this is where the Rev4 outperforms any, when you see this material falling, look at that, it's a mattress in there. And when that thing falls, that is a clump. That's what jams balers. This is problematic in MRFs. But when you have the Rev4 and when the compression doors come down, you don't have bridging and you don't have jams. This is, this is what makes the Rev4 even more efficient because in a conventional 2RAM, this could get jammed. And when you have to unjam a baler, that could take hours. That could take hours. Take hours. You don't get that. Or the clumps and you just overfeed the machine. You don't get that with the Rev4. So here we go. Here's coming up the conveyor. Look at this. This is, these are massive clumps, problematic in a conventional baler. Not to say the Rev, like the Rev2 won't do it, other 2RAM balers, yeah, it'll do it. But it's far more stress to do this in a conventional than it is. Now look at this, that, com that chamber is completely full with that material you saw on the belt. Okay, now as it falls, okay, you notice it's at the top of the doors. So now, when this doors close, Let's go forward. It's a negligible amount of material that didn't quite make it in there. So instead of saying this charge had 92%, all right, how about 90%? But now you have 90% more material inside that bell chamber. So when that main ram comes forward, you're getting 90% more material per push. Hence, greater productivity. And this material, because of its nature and with the rollback and within a conventional bail, it's just gonna take longer. Here, this is this is the big efficiency increase in a MRF. This is where the big money being saved is right here. Cash, tons of it. See the main ram going forward, very negligible amount of material that didn't get into the box. Plastics, okay, the, the, this is um, a little tougher plastics. But again, if you look at this, here we go. Here's the top of the doors, 26 inches above the knife, again. You have, now let's see how much of this material gets inside that box. All but a percent, two percent, so again, 90 percent more material inside that, uh, that charge. Increased production right away. There's the bell. Ah, this is colored HDP, and what's really cool about this, this is a conventional baler, okay? This is a conventional 2RAM that's 60 inches wide, 96 inches long, and from the floor to the top of the night, is 28 inches. So now let's see what happens when the main ram, okay, here it falls in. Okay, now here comes the main ram. Now look at this. Stop. That's a significant percentage of material that got rolled back that did not get in that hopper. So this is a conventional baler. So what was 100% charge is now 90% charge. So you listen. So now with the Rev4, not only would all of that have got in, but 92% of material above the knife would have been in there. So henceforth, the greater productivity. See, that makes a beautiful bell. But again, that's the difference between a conventional baler and a, um, look at that clump, hold on. Surely you can't be serious. This, we saw in a simple uh, charge uh, stroke of the cylinder, how the vib uh, baler vibrated because of the shearing. Watch this. There is no vibration in this big old clump of OCC that... <clears throat> now look at that. That is a full charge. Now watch. Here we go. Stop. That is a full charge. But you're getting 92% above the knife. Again, reiterating the point because you got 26 inches above the knife by 90 inches by, 20, uh, by 60 inches wide. That's 92% more material. Now let's see how much of that gets into the box. Maybe 88% on that one, but I want you to see some. Let's go full speed here, but watch. Whole lot less vibration. Here's some plastics and just, again, look at that. Oof. And now watch, no rollback. Again, more productivity. Here's UBCs. Now this is, um, this is in a Reb 1. But you can see the UBC is getting on top. 
And again, in a rep four, none of that would have happened. That was a rep one. That's the smaller baler. Ten cans. Watch this. Okay, this is a ten cans and a rev one, but you can see it above the knife. Now watch how much material gets rolled back. And rev four, all that would have been inside. Two thousand pound bell, half the time. Two strokes, and it makes a bell. So hopefully this video can help demonstrate the efficiency and how much volume of material actually gets into the hopper with each stroke of the main ram. And when you're getting anywhere from 70 to 92% more material per each stroke of the main ram, well, that's just increased production right off the top. We're not faster. We didn't have to add any extra pumps. We changed the way that was processed with the compression doors. And that's what makes the Rev4 the machine for any Murph. You want to save time, you want to save uh, money, the Rev4, undoubtedly the best machine out there.